Greetings my friends, how are you all doing? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come back to visit a friend of mine, David Fryers. Now if you haven't seen so already, I recently done a wild camp for the first time in David's Woodland here in the east of England. We had an amazing time out in the depths of winter, freezing cold temperatures, but we had an absolute blast. Now during that wild camp, we used a myriad of outdoor cooking hand forge equipment. Now unbeknownst to me at the time, they're actually all made by his brother Trevor who runs a company called TJM Metalworks and what he does there is basically hand forging all of his outdoor equipment that we use on that particular weekend. Also unbeknownst to me, his stuff is actually popular all over the world but primarily in the US and Japan they're huge out there and so I was like blown away, I was like wow I didn't realise he does it full time, he does it to an incredibly high standard and so the reason for this video is because I'm here just for the day to sort out some other things with David and in this process that I was here with him um, he actually had a whole selection of uh, Trevor's hand forged outdoor cooking equipment with him so what I've asked him to do is just take a little bit of time out just to show me personally through all the different things that he does but more importantly how you kind of use them how to use them in an outdoor environment but one thing I need to stress David hasn't asked me to do this video Trevor hasn't asked me to do this video I've asked those guys if I could do this video because a I wanted to learn myself but I thought it's also a good opportunity for you watching to also gain a bit of insight into the kind of equipment that's out there and how best it's used in this kind of outdoor woodland environment that us bushcrafters and outdoors people found ourselves in so what I want to do is just kind of have a bit of a show and tell so David has kindly set up a few of the pieces that Trevor's makes more of the popular ones and we're going to have a little bit of a talk through in terms of you know how to use them and the different kind of variations that are involved so I hope you enjoy the rest of this video well David Fryers I appreciate you having me down your woodland once again so it's quite a blustery day today huh yeah it is cold as well isn't it? <laughs> it is well so I already mentioned to the kind of uh, folks watching that basically you know last time we wild camped together we used a myriad of cooking systems yep and unbeknownst to me at the time it was actually your brother yeah uh, yeah that, that makes him so what's the story behind that well basically it was like two years ago really um Trev's like a, a fabricator welder and uh I was after a grill you know the grill I'll show you down there in a minute um so, so I can put in my rucksack you know if I go out while camping or whatever, I want to cook some food, have a little fire, it's just a small little fire, I can get the grill out and put my pots and pans on it. And the ones I've had in the past were the Coleman ones and stuff like that, you know, the cheaper ones, which go rusty and they, the rust is not a problem, but they bend up and over the heat. So uh, I said, can you make us one? And he made one, then he made another one, another one, and we sort of developed it um, to a point where he got, it must have taken him about four months to get sort of a, a working one that was done the job. Um, and since then, we've sort of, well, it's not me, you know, I've helped him with ideas, um, but he's, he's developed a whole range of outdoor um, camping for people who just want to lightweight on their rucksack or car camping or base camp camping. So um, I've just brought a selection down so uh, you can sort of get an idea, the quality and the finish, what he does. Um, one thing I have to say, there's a lot of people making stuff like this, but Trevor does it full time. This is his like, full time job. Um, and when he finishes a product, he, he actually heats it up and, and dunks it in oil. And, and so it all soaks into the metal. So it makes it a lot more rust resistant. And it does work. And you, you can, you know, I've had some of it for the last year and they've not gone rusty at all. Some of them that we used last in the last camp. Um, we've just been out sitting over there and they're not no rushing them at all. So they are really good because I've, I've, I've even bought um, trivets from Ray Mears and used them once and they've gone rusty as anything, which, you know, is, is fine. You expect that, but he's gone that extra bit further where it can uh, be a lot more rust resistant. So and, and, and unbeknownst to me, what we spoke about at the wild camp is that his stuff is really huge in America and America Japan. and Japan. Yeah. They, they seem to love it out there. Um, surprisingly, America, you'd think there'd be a lot of people making it. Um, but no, you get a lot of sales. And, and in the last sort of year, Japan has sort of been buying lots of his stuff and they just buy like bulk of it. And uh, they, they really like it. But then, you know, there's not many people, you know, hand making outdoor equipment like this to this sort of standard. Um, so, yeah, well, I'll show you, and you can see the, you know, you can see the quality of it. 
and how, how versatile it is as well. Right, so I bought a selection along so you can have a look. So we've got a couple of base camp items, which is, um, this is one of them, this is the fire anchor, and this is the large fire anchor. And it's quite simple, it's got one pole, which you put into the ground, and generally put it at a slight angle going backwards, because you're gonna put some weight and it's gonna bring it forwards. Um, and it comes with, this one comes with four attachments. So generally you'd put on there first, uh, like a frying pan attachment or whatever you want to put on there um, swings around quite nicely sit put your frying pan on there looks great next one would be like for a kettle or a billy can that goes on there quite nicely as well so you can have you could have some water boiling at the top or whatnot and the frying pan at the bottom uh, on this one he's put an extra an extra hanger on now just for just sometimes it's nice if, you, if you've got another pan you just want to put it on the side there or billy can or something like that and this lightweight one which is not for any pots or anything like that but it's great if you just wanted to put um, a light on there or your gloves or your knife fork and spoon or, or a cup it's just there and it's quite nice so I think he does it with two attachments which, which is the, like the frying pan one, the circular one and the, the kettle one um, but then there's these additional ones you can have as well and uh, that works really good and last time you was over we used that almost all weekend cooking with that. It was incredibly versatile that's yep. what I found it was no matter what we were doing was a boiling or keeping something warm or cooking it yeah. was just like yeah. You know and the, and the beauty of these things is you, you can sw just swing them around and bring something else into play whatever you want to do you know it's it works really well um, so there's that now he does a, a sort of a backpack version of this which is the mini fire anchor now the basic one is basically comes with the pole the frying pan attachment and the kettle or billy can and you get the pole so the pole is in two parts and it, one side is it's got a, like a little locking system where once you put it in there and twist it, it locks in place and it won't turn. Because if you don't have that, what will happen is you put your pot in there and it'll start swinging round. So there's a reasoning for it. Um, the bottom part is shorter than the top section. So exactly the same again. Put it in the ground, goes in there quite tightly. Um, the additional uh, hanger he does for it is, is this, which is great for people who want to cook fish, steaks, whatever, bacon works really well so let's just put that one on there now so you wouldn't go out with all three of them but you'd go out either with the with the, the circular one which is like say for the frying pan or take the grill one Don't even make it. so there's there's the frying pan one and we've got the kettle one so that is not heavy at all um, and if you just take out the, t the main pole and the two extra arms you can put that in a rack sack quite easily and that's a really popular one because when you're out and you are you, you know you, you could make up you know you can make up your own sort of tripod system or anything like that but that's just ready to go you know you just get out of your bag don't think about it it's done and if you're doing group uh, fires like we do up at Fires Woods I know guys who've got mates who've got these when they want to cook some food they do is get it out the bag put it on the edge of the fire and they've got their own little cooking system right next to them don't have to worry about waiting for the tripod or whatever to be you know ready you know when it, free you can just get your own mini fire anchor out and just cook straight away on the corner so it, it works really well as that good example just to put a couple of bits on now we've got there's no water in it so there's no weight in it but there's the, uh, there's just like a, a Trangia 700 mil uh, kettle on there. Um, let's just put that on there. And you know, it works really well. On the larger one, you can put a Zebra go on it quite easy. Um, well, a Dutch oven, but we did use the Dutch oven on that other one the other day. Um, and. I haven't even got that in the ground that, that deep. So sort of that's what you'd use if you add it in your backpack. 
this is more for like base camp or car camping. So with this one, obviously a big thing, and obviously I'm, if I'm preaching to the converter down, I do apologise, yeah. but for those of you that are maybe new um, or kind of don't have a huge amount of experience, yeah. um, do you want to just touch just briefly on the fact that when you're cooking outdoors, there's obviously a lot of fire management, okay? Yeah. There's, um, you know, cooking things. So depending on what you're cooking, you want to kind of have a versatility. To well, yeah, definitely, because... So you, you, when you get a fire going, first thing you want to do is get some hot water on, don't you? So you want to you want to get some hot water on. So you don't want to waste them flames. So something like this, you know, you you put your you you put your, your kettle or whatever it was high up high, right, just over the touch of the fire, and you know you, you, then you heat the water up. If you keep it heating there, the water will evaporate, you know. So you just move it to one side, and that's the beauty of this system is that with a tripod. Yes, you can hire it up and down, but only one person can generally sort of cook on it at a time. With this, you can put a couple of things on at the same time. Um, you know, generally like the, we normally keep the, the frying pan uh, attachment lower down. It's long, normally the first thing that goes on because generally when you're cooking, you're cooking over the coals, you want to be closer down to the, to the fire. So it just gives you that versatility to be able to sort of regulate the heat of what you're cooking. Um, and a lot of time, when you, especially like the Dutch oven, you, you're not cooking on high heat. You're sort of slow cooking. So you don't want, you know, if, if you, when you when you're cooking something for a long time, you you know the fire's going to die down. You're going to put more wood on it, aren't you? It's going to flame up. So you, then you need to higher the pot up and lower it down again. So it's pretty versatile. So we've got a couple of grills now. Um, let's start with the lightweight one. This is like my own one, so you can see it's been used. Um, a bit of oil on that, and it looked like new again. This is a, a small throw-down grill. Um, he makes it from a really high-grade uh, steel. Uh, so I've had this over the fire quite a lot, and it hasn't warped or bent or anything like that at all. But the beauty of this is that you'd put that in the back of your rucksack, you don't even know you've got it there. And once you get a little fire going, uh, you just like chuck that on there, put your pot on it or whatever it is, um, fire pan, you know, it's just one of them items. And yet again, for a big group, if there's a group of you, this is quite a good item to add because you can just sort of get a corner of the fire, bring some coals over and uh, cook your food or whatever you're doing with it. Um, I have cooked um, fish on this as well uh, and steak and uh, yeah, don't weigh anything, don't even know you've got it in your pack. Next up, this is um, his sort of lightweight uh, grill with legs. Um, you can see the quality of it, the finish of it is absolutely superb. Yeah, yeah again, they're all sort of quenched in oil, so they're really, really um, sort of quite rust resistant. Don't get me wrong, if you leave it out, it's, it will get rusty, but it takes quite a lot. And the beauty of this one is that um, <clears throat> with the legs the way they are, depending on the size of the fire you've got, you know, you can sort of push it into the ground, push the legs in, get it closer, you know, to the ground, you've got a nice sturdy, even that, that's a, I don't know, a three litre, uh, a three litre kettle, you know, that's really, really sturdy. Another thing with this is, well, if you don't want to actually take the legs, you can actually take the legs off by swinging it round and you can take the legs off, so you can just take the top bit as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, that, that you know, it's not going to bend, it's not going to, you know, unless you've had it in a red hot fire, it may do, but generally, you know, all the uses I've had out of them, they've been superb, and nothing's happened to them at all. And that folds out, and you can put that in your rucksack. And I used to say, I have one very similar, not similar, similar size to this, um, the old cheapo ones, and uh, I used it for years, to be honest, but it was, crap you know what I mean but there's that so they're, they're two sort of you can put them in your rucksack quite easily um, the next up is sort of a base cap now he makes this in three sizes this is the medium size one um, the small one hasn't got the plate on it uh, the medium one obviously has got the plate and the grill and the large one's got a plate and, and like the grill on it as well and this is you know you can see the quality the thickness of the steel um, little things like you know the way that the uh, he's, he's put the plate in there, it's underneath, so food's not going to fall off. You know, if you've got sausages on there, they're not going to roll off. Um, and this ain't going to warp up or bend at all. And yeah, again, the legs can come off this if you want to take the legs off. Um, but this is a you won't put this in your rucksack because it, it, it's got some weight to it. But 
you know, you buy something like this, it's going to last you forever. If you look after it, it's going to last forever. Um, you know, basically, you know, you Dutch oven on there, you cook some eggs on there. Um, so you, you would kind of use that as a hot plate, basically? Yeah, so I'd, I'd, yeah I'd use it as an actual plate, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a pan. So I'd cook bacon on there, sausages, steak, whatever. Um, and you could, you know, fry eggs on there. Um, we was hoping to do that, and it'd be nice to do that, but we hadn't had a chance to. But uh, yeah, I was going to cook some eggs on there, and uh, which I will do in future. But I've used the larger version, which I've got over there. Um, yeah, and we've cooked eggs full fry up on it, and it's worked brilliantly. So it's one of my items. You buy that, and it will last you for, for, for you know forever, really, as long as you look after it and maintain it. Um, but where else can you buy anything like this? You know, there ain't many companies making it. There's not people making it to this sort of standard. All this stuff is, is high in quality, um, and he makes sure that it's all 100%. And so, with, just in short then, so basically you have two aspects of the, the kind of stuff that he makes. So you have one which is designed to actually be carried around yep. um, in your backpack, yep. and then you have ones which are obviously more base camp or more per permanent location, yep. you know, stroke car camping orientated. Is yep. that correct? Yes. Yeah, so... He, he makes it for all sort of, you know, you, you, you still like, see, um, I like having the lightweight gear, see, that, so that stays in my pack all the time. Um, just because, it, you know, it's, it's it's a useful item to have, you know, or something like this. If you want to go light, a bit lighter, you'd have that. If you don't mind a bit of extra weight, you'd take that. Um, and, you know, you, it, this is such a versatile bit of kit, you know, when you've got having a fire, you know, it, it just works. And you can have, your, you know, your, your kettle on there, your frying pan on there. Um, or you can cook directly on it if you want. You've got, you know, you won't put sausages in there because they'd fall through. But a bit of steak would be all right on that. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, you know. Oh, years ago when I was using, you know, could never get anything like this. You know, this is what you want. You know, what I mean, and no one was making it. Um, they are brilliant. And I'm not just saying that because it's my brother who makes it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm coming from someone who wants this equipment but you couldn't buy it, you couldn't get hold of it, you know. So certain these items here that, you know, I, I want, I, you could never get hold of. So it just sort of, I just asked him one day, just, you know, could you make, one, could you make me a grill? And it, that's how it all came about. So just to conclude, um, yeah. a couple of things. So in terms of the selection, obviously this is just a, a partial oh, yeah, of he makes aspect of his collection. More. So would it be okay if I put a link to his, uh, his store? Then obviously yeah, people, it, yeah can have a look. Uh, does he ship all over the world? He ships all over the world, yeah. As I say, you know, America, Japan, you know, I mean, he, he, anywhere, Europe. He, I think that's that's his biggest market, to be honest, you know, uh, around the world. Um, and they just, they get so much, if you look on his Etsy site and just look at people's reviews on it, you get an idea of what people think of it. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to put a link down below to uh, Trevor's uh, Etsy store, yeah, uh, where he kind of retails his stuff, and also you can just see the general selection. And he's got his inst he's got Instagram as well. Yeah, so, so I was going to mention Instagram's a good place to kind of connect with him, potentially yeah. asking questions, etc. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, I get nothing from this video whatsoever. You know, I'm I was so impressed with all of this last time. No, it's just, well, it. you just said you you know it, you didn't know really much about, and uh, you know, it sort of explained and showed some of the uh, the items I was using. You was just intrigued to see more. Yeah. And so that was kind of like, I was just like, so, so I really do appreciate you taking the time out, David. So no, what, I'll, brilliant. what I'll do, guys, I'll put links below to the Etsy and Instagram belonging to Trevor, aka TJM Metalworks. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of feel free to have a look. Uh, the main thing, you know, with this one was to just kind of see the kind of versatility and how it can be used around camp. This is stuff that's all pretty new to me as well. Uh, I've not used this kind of system a whole great deal over the years. So it's really insightful. So, David, once again, I do appreciate your time. Thank no, you. I appreciate you coming down, mate. Have a look.